Hi, welcome to the Human Rights Awards Dinner. I'm Larry McDonough, a volunteer with the Advocates. The program and awards will start at 7 p.m. Central. In the meantime, I'm here to spend some time with you and play some music. I'm going to play the music of Bill Evans. He was a descendant of Welsh and Carpe Thorusan immigrants. I'm going to start with Waltz for Debbie that he wrote in 1953. It's from my new CD, Kind of Bill on the Palace Grounds, marking 40 years since the death of Bill Evans. For every one dollar donated to the advocates, seven dollars in human rights services are delivered. This is possible because of the thousands of volunteers who work with the advocates every year. The next piece I'm going to play is My Foolish Heart, which was written by Victor Young, 
and he spent his childhood in Poland with his grandmother and later came to the United States. In the last 12 months, 1,300 people have volunteered with the Advocates for Human Rights. The Advocates and Volunteers worked on over 1,100 immigration cases last year. The last piece I'm going to play is All of You, written by Cole Porter, but rearranged by Bill Evans.
Thanks for being here tonight. All the music I played is from my new CD, Kind of Bill on the Palace Grounds, marking 40 years since the death of Bill Evans. It's available from LarryMcDonoughJazz.Homestead.com. Thank you for supporting the Advocates for Human Rights. I'm Stephanie from MRA, Mobilizing for Rights Associates. I'm Saida. Good evening, this is Ajit Sahi from Washington, D.C. I am from the Indian American Muslim Council. Good evening from Sofia, Bulgaria. I am Kumaba Ibumbuya. I am the coordinator for Society for Human Rights and Development Organization, ECIU. Good evening from Singapore. I'm Ted Tan from Think Center. My name is Alexis Kamangira. I'm from Malawi and I work for the Supreme UK. Good evening from Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Leela Ramdi, Chair of the Greater Caribbean for Life. Bonjour de Paris. I am Aurélie Plassé from the World Coalition Against the Death Penalty. Bonjour, je m'appelle Toko Nestor. Je suis le président de l'association Point P. Good evening and namaste everyone. I am Anu Boren from Saku Power Community School. Hello everyone. My name is Adam Ake Dempster and I, I work from Liberia. We work with the Advocate for Human Rights. We have been partners for more than a decade. We work together on especially the universal periodic review process of the United Nations. We have been working in very good and worthwhile partnership with them for the last 25 years. We recently work with the Advocates for Human Rights on the Universal Periodic Review of Singapore. We've been working with the Advocates for Human Rights for over 15 years on programs to prevent violence against women in Morocco. Um, we've been working with the Advocates for Human Rights on the UPR. We work with the Advocates for Human Rights on issues related to the death penalty and the Universal Periodic Review process. We work with the Advocates for Human Rights on international advocacy to the UN. Welcome. Enjoy the program. Enjoy your evening. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Directors and staff of the Advocates for Human Rights, welcome to the 2021 Human Rights Awards Dinner. My name is Jim O'Neill and I serve as the board chair of the organization. With deep gratitude, I'd like to thank our sponsors, those who have supported us for many years and those who are joining us for the first time this year. Special thanks to our lead sponsors, Fagri Drinker, Fredrickson and Byron, and Robbins Kaplan. You will hear from Robin Phillips, our executive director, learn about our latest accomplishments, meet this year's award recipients, and have an opportunity to support the Advocate's mission with a donation. And thank you to Pat Brenna for her unwavering support of the Advocates. Good evening. It is my joy to participate again in this celebration of human rights. The Human Rights Award Dinner raises critical funds to continue the vital work with our partners locally 
and globally. We have an ambitious goal of raising $200,000 tonight. If you registered ahead of time, you should have received a mailer with a program, a window cling, and an envelope. With support from our event sponsors and individual hosts, we have raised over $150,000 so far. We are very grateful for their support, but we need your support to help us meet our goal. Please join the community of Advocates for Human Rights. Simply text HRAD to 44321 or use the pre-addressed envelope that was mailed to you and contribute right now. And don't forget to keep an eye on the online auction. Bidding closes at 8.30 Central Time. Back to you, Jim. Thank you, Pat. And thank you to everybody who supports the work of the advocates financially. And now we'll hear from our executive director, Robin Phillips. Good evening. Thank you for all the ways you support and inspire us. Thank you for sharing our vision of a world where every human being lives with dignity, justice, and equality, regardless of where they were born, who they love, how they worship, or the color of their skin. This vision guides everything we do. During the pandemic, we were busy with critical human rights monitoring in our home community. Our watch team documented COVID's impact on women seeking court protection from violence. We reported our findings weekly to our community partners so we could address the issues as they arose. For example, some judges denied orders for protection in domestic violence cases because of the governor's moratorium on evictions. We called the governor's office to explain what was happening and they immediately fixed the problem. When we documented COVID's devastating economic impact on the ability of victims of violence to leave their abusers, our partners were able to get COVID relief money directly into the hands of those victims. While COVID ground most immigration proceedings to a halt, federal immigration officials continued to detain people in increasingly perilous conditions. Our extraordinary volunteers continued monitoring immigration court, allowing us to address difficult issues as they arose. We found a severe lack of clearly defined standards, oversight, and accountability resulting in failures of healthcare, safety, and due process. We also ensured that governments around the world were called to account at the United Nations for their human rights practices. Working with partners from China to Bulgaria, Burundi to Ukraine, we submitted a record number of reports. In a game-changing move, the UN allowed remote participation from accredited organizations like the Advocates. So against all odds, we were able to expand our impact on human rights practices around the world during the pandemic. Tonight, we recognized Arnella Frazier for her bravery in documenting the murder of George Floyd. She is a true human rights defender. Because of her, millions of people saw firsthand the horrifying impact of white supremacy and systemic racism. While accountability is essential, a guilty verdict does not solve our underlying problems. In addition to police brutality, we see unacceptable assaults on voting rights and dramatic race-based disparities in healthcare, education, and employment. Let me be clear, these are human rights violations resulting from entrenched racism. It will take all of us working together to end it. We know we don't have all the answers. However, an unwavering belief in our common humanity and a commitment to fundamental human rights is a good place to start. We remain hopeful because we know the good in the world far outweighs the bad. Because of you, we have made progress. We thank you for being the change we want to see in the world. Good evening, I'm Lon Huynh. And I'm Sam Myers. 
If you've been at our human rights awards dinners in the past, you may remember us. I migrated from Houston, Texas to Minnesota to work for the advocates as a legal fellow in 1996. I now have the honor of serving the board in addition to volunteering on asylum cases. And I'm of counsel to the immigration law group at Nyland Johnson Lewis. And as an adjunct professor of law at the University of Minnesota Law School, I teach immigration law to the next generation. I've been volunteering with the advocates since the mid 1980s. As immigration lawyers, Lon and I know how important the right to counsel is for people seeking asylum. As board members, we know how important financial support is to achieve the mission of the advocates. The amazing staff at the advocates make a global impact every day through their work because of your support. We are here to ask you to support the work by giving, even if you've already donated. In addition to your donation, please bid on our unique and amazing auction items. I'm offering my six course Vietnamese dinner and Sam is offering his amazing fly fishing outing. In fact, the other board members and I are extremely competitive about our auction offerings. Participate in the competition by bidding early and bidding often. Remember, the value of your donation is multiplied by the extraordinary amount of volunteer services that your donations support. The auction closes at 8.30 tonight, so bid early and bid often. And I can guarantee you I will be there at 8.29 to bid on <laughs> Sam's Fly Fishing Package. And now let's hear what's happening at the Advocates this year. I'm Jennifer Presthold. And I'm Michelle Garnett McKenzie. We're the Advocates Deputy Directors. You can tell by our badges. We've both been at the Advocates for a while, but I think it's fair to say that this has been a pretty unique year. You're right there. And happy 25th anniversary, by the way. Thanks. I've been doing international advocacy at the UN since the mid 90s, but I never thought I would be appearing at UN sessions from home via Zoom with partners around the world. Yeah, I bet the live tweeting and Facebook debriefings of UN Human Rights Council sessions probably weren't on your list either. But, you know, that's been a real silver lining of what's been a devastating year, the ability to connect and participate regardless of geography. Absolutely. This year, I also had a chance to participate for the first time in the Women's Human Rights Training Institute, which is led by our women's human rights team and our partners in Bulgaria working with a cohort of young attorneys throughout Eastern Europe and for the former Soviet Union as they learned to use international human rights mechanisms was really inspiring. And thanks to the remote platform, we were able to engage experts from around the world. Now, those lawyers are amazing. And I'm so excited to be working with a phenomenal pro bono team that's helping us develop a new online human rights training platform. That's gonna help let us work with human rights defenders worldwide. We definitely need that. This year, we worked with partners on multiple platforms, including WhatsApp in countries like Sierra Leone, where there's almost no internet access. And I'm really excited about what's, what's to come. We've also engaged volunteers in new ways, haven't we? Yeah, that's right. Our pro bono model is connecting volunteers around the country and, and around the world with vital work. As we move to online meetings with clients, we were able to leverage legal and other expert help from around the country. It's one step closer to our vision of ensuring access to counsel for people fleeing persecution wherever they live. But there's one thing I'm particularly excited about. What's that? It's the work your team is doing to engage asylum seekers in documenting human rights violations before the UN. That has been so powerful. We've invited our asylum clients to contribute testimony about the human rights conditions that caused them to flee. Their survivors and witnesses and their voices need to be heard at the highest level of the international community. You know, we've done so much in spite of the pandemic and we might be coming back to the office, but we definitely have a lot ahead of us. Good evening. I'm Bindi Swamy. I first learned of the advocate's work when I was an intern. Now I represent people whose lives are at risk because of who they are or what they believe. And I am Kevin Zhao. We are two of the advocate's newest board members. Like Bindi, I also work with clients to help them find safety here in the United States. As volunteers, we see the impact of the Advocates for Human Rights work. We see that impact in unaccompanied children escaping violence and families being reunited, in detained immigrants being released and trafficking victims finding hope, in political dissidents, religious minorities, 
and members of the LGBTQ community expressing themselves without fear of persecutions. Volunteers are at the center of the Advocates' mission, and we are grateful to everyone who gives their time. But as board members, we know that it also takes money. If you can, please make a financial contribution. That's right, Bindi and Kevin. Every year I volunteer my time as the Advocates Auctioneer. I know how important the money is. That's why I always buy a few mystery boxes and make a donation. Last year, all of us together raised $209,000. That money helped us respond to urgent needs. This was possible because of your donations. Thank you so much for all you bring about. I just found out that we have an anonymous match. Donations from new donors will be matched dollar for dollar up to $10,000. Whatever you can give is so very much appreciated. By joining together, we can reach our goal of raising $200,000 tonight and maybe even more. Your gift right now will help us end our fiscal year strong and lay the foundation for our work in the next year. Thanks, Pat, for telling us what our financial gifts can do. Most of all, your support helps us engage and support volunteers. We believe that each of us can play a part in defending human rights. Last year, more than 1,300 volunteers delivered more than $13 million in human rights work. Pat yourself on the back if you were part of this impressive group. All right. As Kevin said, volunteers are integral to the success of our mission. Each year, we honor volunteers who have gone above and beyond to change the world for good. This year, we're thrilled to honor five outstanding individuals and teams. Take a look. It is my honor to present a long overdue volunteer award to Dottie Burans and Rhonda Phillips. They have provided extraordinary volunteer service since 1995. When asked, they always say yes and lend a helping hand. Maybe. They always say yes because nobody can say no to Robin when it comes to defending human rights. Well, over the last 25 years here at The Advocates, I've done quite a few things. Um, in the past few years, I've done a lot more writing on envelopes, stuffing envelopes, um, just doing some work that we can do to help uh, The Advocates raise more money. During the pandemic, they became essential. They hand-addressed and stuffed thousands of invitations. Whenever you received an invitation to a virtual event this past year, you received a personal welcome from them. For Dottie and Rhonda, no task has ever been too small or too big when they could find ways to help. I am always finding new ways to help the advocate. Even help move furniture. <laughs> they are amazing advocates for human rights. I'm so excited that I am able to at least do a little part to be a part of what the advocates does. For four years, volunteer court observers have attended deportation hearings at the Fort Snelling Immigration Court. The Advocates honors all the volunteers with the Immigration Court Observation Project and tonight recognizes 12 exceptional leaders. Altogether, these 12 individuals have completed more than 900 observation shifts and documented thousands of hearings. These honorees have collected priceless information about the treatment of detained immigrants and the injustice deeply embedded in our federal immigration system. We take notes, we observe, and, and we see inherent unfairness. We see a, a, a degrading, demeaning system. Detainees, the immigrants, the asylum seekers, trying to tell their story, their dreams, why they came here. People realize that the immigration policy of this country is, is, a, is a national crisis and a blotch on the morality of, of our country. The Court Observer Program, by our presence, means that we are really standing on the side of love, on really making a difference on the side of justice, and who doesn't behave differently if they think someone's watching them. Many of them have recruited and mentored new court observers, helped enter data, and write reports. They have grown the project to what it is today. 
We are grateful to them for their incredible contributions to the human rights movement. Scott Smith spent most of his practice as a defense trial lawyer in personal injury, engineering malpractice, pharmaceutical, and workplace environmental exposure cases. This experience is exactly what makes Scott a remarkable pro bono attorney that is so deserving of this year's volunteer award. Let me, let me tell you my favorite story here. Um, this involves a young man who was about 15 years old. He was living with his family in Mexico. He was enticed, truly enticed by his aunt to uh, smuggle across the border, come north and work. They came to Minnesota. The aunt put them to work under horrific conditions. To make a long story short, we were successful in about a two-year campaign of getting that individual a T visa. He is now with his girlfriend, has a new baby, and has a life to look forward to. Scott is willing to take on tough cases and roll with the punches. We can always count on him to rise to the challenge, and he's already made a name for himself in our local court. We've even seen one of the judges compliment him publicly, highlighting how uniquely prepared and professional Scott is, with his zealous advocacy and contribution to human rights, he inspires all of us. Congratulations, Scott. I'm very pleased to honor Carrie Rasser with the Volunteer Award. Carrie is a powerhouse volunteer who brings her extraordinary energy and passion for human rights to everything that she does for the advocates. Carrie moved to Minnesota in 2018, and literally one of the first things she did was take an asylum case. She's also been a valuable member of our International Justice Program's advocacy team, traveling with us to the United Nations in Geneva. In 2020, Carrie helped us pivot to remote international advocacy, briefing human rights issues and speaking at several live events at the UN Human Rights Council. So I do um, representation of immigrants seeking uh, asylum or other relief here in the U.S. Also, I've been working with the International Justice Program, which I love, which is advocacy before the United Nations. So I've literally traveled to Geneva, walked right into the Human Rights Council, worked in there, worked in the Human Rights Committee, spent a week in Geneva advocating for certain countries and certain issues that are that we think are important. And then I've also done representation, uh, bond representation of detained immigrants. We're so grateful that Carrie shares her tremendous dedication, skills, and enthusiasm with us. Last year, as the Trump administration assailed immigrant rights at a rapid pace, we fell underwater as we tried to fight against these regulations while supporting our clients and advising pro bono attorneys. Enter Harvey Ryder, Dennis Lane, and their team at Stinson. Administrative law plays a big role in so many parts of, of everyday life, and certainly in human rights rules, whether you're talking about the, the Department of Homeland Security or immigration rules adopted by the Department of Justice and the immigration courts. Um, all of all of those things, I think, our experience, you know, helped uh, helped us with fashioning comments uh, for for. For advocates. Having this lifeline to incredibly competent and passionate experts not only informed persuasive actions by the advocates, but also kept us grounded in the knowledge that we weren't alone and unarmed in the struggle against a seeming Goliath. Our renewed work with them this year on advancing positive proposals under the Biden administration is a reflection of that. Uh, when you start reading these stories um, that are so far out of your day-to-day -day life, but they're the reality of people who are desperate to to get into the country just to be able to have what we would, what all of us would take for granted as a decent life. And you just see the terrible conditions and. If you can alleviate those or change those people's lives in any way, it's, it's just a tremendous feeling. And now we turn to this year's Don and Arvon Frazier Human Rights Awards. It is my view that the human rights idea has to become the central organizing principle for the planet. That the world community can only survive and work together with that as the centerpiece. Good evening, I'm Tom Fraser and I was one of the co-founders of The Advocates back in 1983 along with my father. My parents, Don and Arvon Fraser, ignited The Advocates for Human Rights from the very beginning. Arvon inspired women's human rights activists across the globe, encouraging generations of women to find their voices, make their lives better, and improve the world. She was fearless, bold, and blunt and did not bend to those who tolerated violence against women as part of their culture. Don, on the other hand, was a quiet but determined champion for human rights. From fair housing to early childhood education, human rights issues defined his career in public office. While in Congress, Don held hearings on human rights violations by U.S. allies 
and drafted legislation requiring annual State Department reports on human rights conditions in countries receiving U.S. aid. As one of the advocates' founders, Don's vision was to leverage volunteer resources to promote and protect human rights in Minnesota and around the world. In their honor, the Advocates presents the Don and Arvon Fraser Human Rights Award to individuals or organizations who exemplify the principles Don and Arvon stood for throughout their more than 90 years. Steadfast commitment, hard work, and an unfailing belief that human rights should be a bedrock principle for all people. I'm Rosalind Park, and I direct the Women's Human Rights Program. This year, we honor two organizations at the forefront of the fight for women's human rights. The Center for Gender and Refugee Studies at UC Hastings College of Law and Women Against Violence Europe. Good evening. I'm Sarah Brennis, Director of the Refugee and Immigrant Program. We are proud to present the Don and Arvon Frazier Human Rights Award to the Center for Gender and Refugee Studies, also known as CGRS. Through policy advocacy, training and technical assistance, and litigation, CGRS protects the fundamental human rights of refugee women, children, LGBTQ individuals, and others who flee persecution in their home countries. In 1999, Karen Musalo won asylum for a young woman from Togo who fled to the United States to escape female genital mutilation and a forced polygamous marriage to a much older man. Following that groundbreaking legal victory, Karen founded CGRS. Over the past 20 years, CGRS has grown into an internationally respected resource for gender asylum, renowned for its knowledge of the law and ability to combine sophisticated legal strategies with policy advocacy and human rights interventions. CGRS provides invaluable resources to lawyers working on gender-based asylum cases including to pro bono attorneys working with the Advocates for Human Rights. CGRS takes the lead on controversial issues, participates as co-counsel or amicus in impact litigation, produces an extensive library of litigation support materials, maintains an unsurpassed database of asylum records and decisions, and works in coalitions with immigrant, refugee, LGBTQ, children's, and women's rights networks. Asylum protections took a hard blow over the last four years. The prior administration took direct aim at gender-based claims, seeking to erode advancements and protections for domestic violence survivors and others targeted by non-government actors. At the same time, we saw unprecedented numbers of people driven from their homes, seeking safety in the United States. Coordination between agencies like CGRS and the Advocates for Human Rights proved critical as we responded to individual requests for help while litigating to prevent harmful regulations from going into effect. We are grateful to be in partnership with the Center for Gender and Refugee Studies. Now, let's hear from CGRS. The challenges were numerous. <laughs> the Trump administration, you know, eviscerated asylum protections on every level. Um, and it was quite challenging because things were constantly evolving. And sometimes as soon as we did a webinar, the next day, something changed. <laughs> so we really fought back against the Trump administration's attempts to undermine asylum protections on all fronts. We were so honored to have the opportunity to collaborate with the advocates, and, and we successfully pushed for um, the, the city councils in Minneapolis and St. Paul um, to come out and express their support for domestic violence survivors seeking asylum. You know, our strategy now is not only to return us to the status quo ante, but really to set forth our affirmative vision for a welcoming asylum system. We worked with partners across the country to launch a campaign uh, called the Welcome with Dignity campaign that is really focused on once and for all really living up to the ideals set forth in our international obligations. The privilege with working with some attorneys who were representing a domestic violence survivor who had been wrongly denied protection due to Trump administration policies. And this past spring, we were able to win a, a positive precedent rule in, in that case, which is called R Rodriguez Tornes. I think that the, you know, the Rodriguez Tornes um, victory just really uh, helped to sh show how our model works together uh, to achieve results for individual asylum seekers, but um, also for, for, for all asylum seekers. It is an honor 
to introduce Women Against Violence Europe, or WAVE. WAVE unites 160 women's organizations from 46 European countries under one umbrella to end violence against women and children. Since 1994, WAVE has been a fearless voice to promote women's human rights across Europe. It works tirelessly to influence policymakers, build the capacity of women's NGOs, and share cutting edge information. Its annual conference brings together more than 300 women's rights defenders, where the advocates reconnects with our partners and forges new alliances every year. WAVE is a staunch ally of the advocates in our fight against the backlash to human rights. Many women's human rights defenders are working under dangerous conditions in their countries, and they rely on WAVE support. Some face frivolous lawsuits filed purely to intimidate them. Others face personal threats and attacks. Amidst these great challenges, WAVE gives us transnational scaffolding on which we all can stand. And now, let's hear from WAVE. The WAVE Network is a membership organization and we do have 160 members in 46 European countries. Uh, they are all women's NGOs and they work to prevent and tackle violence against women. And this gives also every single woman we work with the real uh, sensation that she's not alone. We support our members in building their capacity to better work with their clients on the front line through trainings, conferences, partnership projects, and crucially also through uh, lobbying and ad advocacy for better legislation to protect women. We are in a larger network that, that we are really backed by something which is important. And being, as I said, together all over the world is absolutely crucial. We are not only able to support our members, but also to elevate how that work is seen on European level, international level, and how we can jointly influence policymaking, practical work, and also stand together and support each other in times of crisis. WAVE is really, really appreciating the support that Advocates of Human Rights have given us and our members over the past five years and the very different levels they're able to support us with and that we are able to collaborate with. We are motivated more that we don't give up. I'm here to present our Human Rights Defender Award to a brave young Minnesotan, Darnella Frazier. The initial public report by the Minneapolis Police Department on George Floyd's death described a man who appeared to be under the influence, a man resisting arrest, and it said that officers called an ambulance when the man exhibited medical distress. It noted that the man died at the hospital and that no weapons were used, and that's about all it said. That might have been all that we heard about the death of George Floyd, except for one thing. The event was witnessed. Witness is a critical human rights function, particularly when oppressors seek to discredit the oppressed. Observers brave enough to document abuses by governments and purveyors of hate make it possible to hold perpetrators accountable. Because it was witnessed, the murder of George Floyd was not simply brushed aside. Instead, every minute is burned into our consciousness because Darnella Frazier documented for all to see the police brutality that the black community endures. She set out to take her young cousin to her local drugstore. When she came upon four officers in the process of killing a black man who was handcuffed on the pavement, she knew that what she was seeing was wrong. Holding a cell phone camera, she stood in plain sight within a few feet of the officers, and she videotaped every minute as the breath was squeezed from George Floyd's body. Because of Darnella Frazier, People all over the world didn't just hear about it, they directly witnessed a policeman's knee on a black man's neck. 
They saw the officer's smug indifference, heard his arrogant dismissals of the pleas not only of George Floyd, but of Minneapolis citizens who begged for the life of a man they didn't know. And the world responded with an outrage long overdue. Derek Chauvin is now a convicted murderer, while George Floyd will live forever in our history, alongside other martyrs to white supremacy and American racism, like Emmett Till, Medgar Evers, and Addie Mae Collins, Cynthia Wesley, Carol Robertson, and Denise McNair, the four little girls who were murdered in their Birmingham church. Darnella Frazier, represents the best in us, a person willing to stand up to injustice and racism at no small cost to herself. The Advocates for Human Rights is proud to present her with the 2021 Human Rights Defender Award. Thank you, Jim. On behalf of Darnella Frazier and her family, I humbly accept this award from the Advocates for Human Rights on her behalf. As her pro bono counsel, words don't describe what Darnella has gone through this year, but I do want to express to you that she is very humble in her acceptance of this award and in the acknowledgement of all that she is, all of the attention that she has received this year locally regionally, nationally, and internationally. And from the bottom of her heart, she wants you all to know that she truly appreciates the work that you do. And that is that great work that inspires her and allows her to know that what she did was the right thing. And so again, I thank you on behalf of Darnella Frazier for this wonderful, prestigious award and she just will continue to do the right thing with the support of organizations like yours. Thank you. And from all of us at The Advocates, thank you for participating in our virtual Human Rights Awards Dinner tonight. A special thank you to Big Event Productions for helping us put together the videos. We also express our gratitude to our sponsors, host committee members, the Human Rights Awards Dinner Planning Committee members, staff, and my fellow board members. We look forward to seeing you in person, whether this is at the Minnesota State Fair in our Minneapolis office, in the greater Minnesota, in Puerto Rico, Geneva, Albania, or Nepal. And we will continue to connect virtually so that all people from around the globe can join us in, the, in changing the world for good. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Merci beaucoup.